Global Special Correspondent Claude Adams has just returned from Zaire. He joins us now. Claude? Peter, for all the controversy about the slow international response to the crisis, the food and the care is making a difference. Vite, des grands camions arrive, vite! This is what Phil Patterson sees when he shows up for work in the morning. A sea of bodies stretching almost to the horizon. On a volcanic hill in Zaire, where not even a blade of grass will grow. These are the toughest of Rwanda's refugees. They've survived war, disease, hunger and thirst. Thousands have died on the road to get here. Now the survivors want Patterson and his team from Care Canada to keep them alive. It won't be easy. Blankets and plastic sheets will make a difference, but on the day we visited here a week ago, the basics of life had not yet arrived. And when Patterson, a professional relief worker, looks off into the distance, instead of a food convoy, all he can see is more refugees arriving. There's no food, there's no water. So we give them shelter, hopefully food will arrive. Hopefully shelter will arrive. I have no communications here. I have no idea what's going on in Goma. I have no idea what's coming to us. Okay, so we do what we can and we do it with best possible uh, speed. But Patterson does know one thing that is coming, cholera. In the camps further south, the epidemic has already started with deaths of 20,000 or more. It strikes young and old and is resistant to conventional drugs. It spreads through bad water and human waste. Those living among corpses are especially vulnerable. This mother will be lucky to survive, yet she nurses her baby. With no latrines and not enough fresh water, the best the medics can do for many of the victims is ease their last moments and call in the transports when the bodies start to pile up. I would like to know what's about the dead body because we didn't see anyone still now. Patterson is irrepressibly cheerful, but when he talks about cholera, he goes pale. He reminds us that the wind from the cholera tent is blowing directly at him and his team. They're right in the track of the deadly bacteria. Personally, I'm worried. I shake hands with everybody in this camp, uh, trying to be polite. They're a very polite bunch. And uh, they, are, they have all been around the cholera with their relatives and that. Yeah, that bothers me a lot. From the top of a pile of plastic sheets, Guy Banville of Montreal surveys the waves of new refugees arriving by the hour. I can't imagine a worse place in the world to be doing this kind of job. <laughs> well, we didn't choose the place, you know. We got since the beginning of this, uh, this problem. It was catastrophic. And even the site, and I don't know if you know, even a volcano is just starting to erupt there. So we have all the logistic problem you can imagine. The care team doesn't have a contingency plan for a volcanic eruption, but they say everything else is in hand. And if another 400,000 people arrive in the next week or so, they say they'll find a way to cope. In this kind of emergency work, there is optimism or there is nothing. And Peter, all of the aid workers say that ultimately the only solution for the refugees is to go home where they can feed and care for themselves.